Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be diving into a hot topic that's been making the rounds, the value of the Florida real estate market. A recent video by Venture Consulting presented a viewpoint that Florida's real estate is overvalued. An epic housing crash is unfolding in Florida's housing market right now. This is going to be one for the ages. Arguing that the prices of homes have been increasing at the rate that far outpaces wage growth. It's a compelling argument, but I believe there's more to the story that we need to tell. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my perspective as to why I think that this approach is flawed for a state as unique as Florida. I'll break down why I think this analysis might miss the mark and why Florida remains a solid choice for home buyers and investors alike. So jumping right in, let's tackle one of the most overlooked aspects when we're discussing Florida's real estate values, our retirees. So Florida isn't just sunny beaches and theme parks, Parks, it's one of the top destinations for retirees, and that's not by accident. This demographic shift is pivotal, and here's why. Retirees aren't tethered to the typical nine to five, meaning that their income sources think pensions, savings, and those sweet, sweet social security benefits don't follow the same patterns as the working age population. And did I mention that Florida rolls out the welcome map by not taxing social security? Yep, that is a big deal. It directly boosts retirees' purchasing power, making them a significant force in the housing market independent of local wage trends. And in addition to increasing their purchasing power, another argument can be made that since the social security income isn't taxed, it technically doesn't have to be reported as income, at least here in the state of Florida. But it's not just about the tax breaks. The wave of retirees flocking to Florida isn't a trickle. It's more like a flood with more and more people choosing to spend their retirement years, not freezing their butts off, and not to mention to give those joints a break from those cold winter months. This data is supported by the fact that by 2030, all of the baby boomers will be at least 65 years old, the traditional retirement age. This steady demand from financially ready buyers keeps our real estate market vibrant and growing, even when rage growth doesn't keep up with the pace of the housing prices. And let's not forget, many of these retirees are cashing in on properties from pricier markets like the Northeast before moving here. They're entering our market with a level of buying power that's not reflected in local wage statistics. And this influx of wealth is a critical factor that often gets missed in the oversimplified wage versus house price appreciation debate. So when you hear claims about Florida's real estate being overvalued, based on wage growth alone, remember our state's appeal to retirees paints a much richer, more dynamic picture of the market. They're a game changer, making Florida's real estate landscape not just unique, but also resilient and full of opportunities. Now let's pivot to another crucial piece of the puzzle that often gets overlooked, seasonal residents. Yes, I'm talking about those snowbirds out there and part-timers who call Florida their home away from home. And this group has a unique impact on our real estate market and here is why. So seasonal residents or those who live in Florida only part-time of the year bring a different kind of economic dynamic to the table. So unlike full-time residents, many of these part-timers report their income in other states where their primary residence is located. This means that despite owning property here, their financial contributions in terms of state reported income don't directly reflect in Florida's economy the way that traditional residents would. But here is where it gets really interesting. Despite not having their income reported in Florida, these seasonal residents are still investing in our real estate, often purchasing vacation homes or second properties. This creates a demand that somewhat is isolated from the local economic fluctuations, including wage growth. In essence, the real estate market in Florida benefits from an injection of outside capital thanks to these part-time Floridians. This scenario adds another layer as to why measuring Florida's real estate value purely based on local wage increases versus home price appreciation doesn't capture the full story. And tens of thousands of properties are owned by individuals whose financial metrics aren't tied to Florida's wage data. Yet their demand for homes contributes significantly to the market's vitality and the perceived value here. Also, these seasonal residents contribute to the local economy in other ways, so spending money on services, renovations, like you have here behind me, and maintenance for their properties, further supporting the real estate and related sectors. This indirect economic activity bolsters the market in ways that aren't immediately apparent when only considering wage versus property value ratios. So 
When we talk about Florida's real estate market being overvalued, it's essential to go ahead and factor in the substantial influence of seasonal residents and their participation in the market definitely is a testament to the state's appeal and an indicator of robust demand that extends beyond their traditional metrics of home value assessment. All right, team, so we have covered a lot, but there is just one more crucial angle that we've got to explore, and that's the unique makeup of Florida's economy, thanks to our booming tourism and hospitality industry, not to mention the ever-growing fleet of self-employed folks out there calling this sunny state that they're home. So let's dive into what makes Florida's real estate market a whole different ball game. First up, tourism and hospitality. So the lifeline of Florida's economy, we're talking about a state that's practically synonymous with vacation. This sector pumps a life and a whole lot of cash into our economy, but yeah, it's also true that a lot of these jobs aren't hitting high on that pay scale. So with such a huge chunk of the workforce in these roles, it's no shocker that when you crunch the wage numbers, things might look a little bit skewed, especially when stacked against the price tags on these homes. But here's the thing, that doesn't mean our real estate is overvalued. It's just a reflection of the kind of economy that we're rocking here in Florida. Let's not forget our self-employed folks out there. So Florida is a market for entrepreneurs and freelancers from subcontractors to realtors like myself. And a smart move for many self-employed folks is to dial up those business expenses, which sure makes their wage reportings look a little bit lower. But that's just a smart tax play, not a real indicator of economic or real estate value. This may be a little bit of a taboo subject, but since I have a family member in the lending business, I can't tell you how many times he's heard the words, it's a cash business, so not all of our money is in that report that you see there. So. What this all boils down to is that Florida's got its own economic vibe fueled by tourists flocking for some fun in the sun and a large self-employed population. This setup supports a real estate market that's vibrant and full of opportunity way beyond what wage stats alone can tell you. So when you hear whispers about Florida's real estate being overpriced because wages aren't keeping up with home prices, remember that we're playing a totally different game here. So guys, there's my answer to ReVenture Consulting. It's also important to note that he makes his business grow by doing all these doom and gloom, clickbaity titles because he sells digital products which capitalize on viewers visiting his app and signing up for premium access. I can't fault him for that, but there is an incentive there that he has to paint this picture. So listen, I love the concept of showing which states are overvalued, but you can't just use a broad brush when reporting analytics like this. So with a mix of retirees, seasonal residents, not reporting their income in the state of Florida, and a larger than usual self-employment population, these are all things to consider when discussing wage versus price increases. And if this video speaks to you, please don't forget that I run the greatest relocation team on the Florida East Coast. So don't hesitate to reach out to us by using the contact information below if moving here is on your vision board. And I hope to catch you guys on the next video. Thanks, bye.